Today we're going to talk about speed painting. Speed painting is doing a painting in a small amount of time. So oftentimes you get it confused with speeding up the painting process itself just to put it in a shorter time segment. But it's actually about coming up with the idea in a short amount of time. So let's talk about some tips and tricks to help you get better at speed painting. The first thing is simply preparing for the speed painting. This is simply about doing a little bit of research, collecting proper reference, and getting a good idea before you start the painting. If you don't have a good idea with, before you start the painting, you tend to flounder and don't have a finished goal in mind. The next thing is brushes. One of the biggest issues I see with students every day is that they think that brushes make the, or break the painting. And in some aspect, yes, it does. It, it helps you speed along. But you don't need that many brushes. Here I just have a simple sketch brush. It's nothing more than kind of a rounded triangle um, that I use to draw with. I use a simple hard round brush. The hard round is really nice for hard straight edges and it is nothing more than a circle. And sometimes I'll use a square brush or a flattened hard round that is a little bit angled so it gives you a nice kind of dynamic hard line. Um, it's nothing more than the hard round with just squashed together and put at an angle. Um, that gives you a nice kind of feel to any brush. I also use the soft brush which is nothing more than a simple uh, gradient that I use to basically kind of fill in more of the gaseous area, give it a little bit of tint or tone. Um, it's nice to do that. One of the big things is use it as a larger size. Uh, this brush works great for adding in fog or atmospheric effects and it's nice just to give you that nice blend. From that, the other brushes that I use are simple chalk brushes. Um, anything with a little bit of texture works great. That gives you kind of rough surfaces and allows you to play with that. I also have a little bit more of a uh, natural brush and that will give me some tints and tones, um, some layered effects that I use quite a bit. Um, but ultimately getting something with a decent noise pattern to it. Uh, you can use this for foliage, you can use it for uh, any type of like rough pattern, rough texture, or even building up a rough surface. That works great. And then you can also go in and grab something a little bit more chaotic where you have like the noise or flavors like this. So oftentimes I'll use something similar to like a noise brush where it gives me a little bit of uh, kind of spots on things. Um, and that's nice because you can scale it larger and give it a little bit of an atmospheric appearance. You can use it for stars, you can use it for a number of different tasks. But ultimately, I don't use a ton of all the brushes that I've got. I, I like playing with them, and occasionally you'll find a nice use for a little grass brush um, to give your, your painting a little bit more outline, and it works great for that. But having a ton of brushes doesn't necessarily mean having a better painting. Lassos are another great tool. It's really simply a simple experience to mask off a area and then quickly use a gradient or a paintbrush to fill it in and not have to worry about many of the other locations. Uh, working on a mat on a separate layer is fine, but ultimately a mask of either rectangular or oval or even the lasso tool work great. That also leads into the gradients. Gradients are really nicely to create quick surfaces tint areas and even kind of block out additional areas. You can use gradients to also fill the canvas and quickly tint in a sky, land, anything you want. So you can use custom shapes. Custom shapes are ultimately vectors that you've converted into a digital shape and you can do it a couple different ways. So the first way is using an outline shape, so something along the lines of this where ultimately it gives you a rough idea or rough shape of this. 
Uh, you can also create more complex shapes and build on, so we can add in kind of secondary parts and kind of build that process up. We can also add in shadow shapes, uh, which would ultimately give you the idea that this is going to be a more complex part of a whole block. So in this case, I can create a complex shape of like a little cityscape and I don't have to worry about all those details. All right, and the final thing that really works well in speed painting is ultimately what they call photo bashing or using photo textures. Um, in this case, I've got a simple plain wall and I need to put in this uh, simple texture. All I'm gonna do is move it over this and I'm ultimately putting that brick wall up there like so on top of it and I am basically warping this if I can get it to warp right here there we go so I'm basically warping this to match the wall that I've, I've drawn and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use either a multiply or I'm going to use an overlay or something along those lines to ultimately kind of make that texture look like it belongs on that wall. Anything underneath will allow me to give it that gradient feel and there's many different ways. Sometimes you just have to test out uh, what you're doing. Maybe. And with that, that all said, that's really quickly how to make a speed paint and a tool that you'll need to do this. Uh, in this next section of the video, I basically go through my process and uh, kind of walk you through a speed painting that's sped up. Here's a sped up time lapse of my speed painting. I probably spent about an hour doing this. My big thing is getting in the perspective grids. Uh, I've got the golden ratio in there and I'm ultimately using gradients to fill the background and skies. I'm creating basic shapes just with rough rough shapes and then I'm warping those shapes. I'm working background to foreground and starting to kind of blend those background shapes so, so they're not as prevalent. Then what I'm going to be doing is I'm just lassoing out big areas like the water and kind of filling that in with rough gradients. I'm using some color changing, I'm taking some of those base shapes and I'm warping them so that it looks like it fills in. Then what I'm going to do is ultimately push in a little bit more clouds and more of the storyline. I'm also kind of pulling back things and pulling out things. I'm using some vector shapes and I'm repeating the shapes over and over so that it looks like the city is kind of complete as a whole. I'm reflecting basic shapes and using them as a multiply to give me shadows and things like that. I'm detailing things up a little bit here and there, but ultimately I'm not too concerned about what my my base idea is. I'm just using different brushes that I have to put in the railings and block out the different ideas. But again, I'm working foreground or sorry, background to foreground and ultimately kind of building up that process. I'm using simple brushes to put in reflections and paint in rocks and things like that. I'm just making sure that they have a highlight and a shadow on in order to ultimately kind of make it look somewhat realistic. I don't do this that often. I know I should do more, but ultimately it's a good process for you to understand how to refine what you are doing to kind of make this better. Again, this is about an hour's worth of work and it ultimately is just me doodling uh, for this particular project. Now, as I'm Continuing on and doing this, I'm trying different ideas and I, I don't have like I wanted to get sun rays in there and that ultimately didn't work so I moved on to something else. I'm putting a little figure in there, just hand drawing it, like blurring things out and ultimately just adding texture to it. I'm using some of those vector shapes I talked about and ultimately putting it in there. And not don't be afraid to use your hue saturation and then here I'm even adding some photos to just kind of put in there. And I'm ultimately kind of warping it in and then basically erasing it. Now, that's really it, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'd love to hear from you. All right, talk to you later.